Good evening. I'm Kate Snow in for Lester tonight, who's hosting a town hall with former Vice President Joe Biden. President Trump arrived back at the White House tonight, and every moment was clearly orchestrated to send a message. The president drawing criticism after this moment when he walked up to a balcony and then removed his mask. He then shot a campaign-style video that has just been released in which he thanked his doctors and said he learned so much about coronavirus, telling Americans, don't let it dominate you, don't be afraid of it. The president also touted the unique medical treatment he's received, saying, now I'm better. We begin with Hallie Jackson at the White House for us. Hallie, a confident President Trump, but there's a lot we still don't know medically. That's right, Kate. The president's return to the White House certainly sent a message tonight, but maybe not the one he wanted to. The news that he is now out of the hospital, overshadowed by that maskless moment. Already, you're hearing concern about the signal that sends to Americans. Here it is, late tonight, too. The president also released a video that you mentioned that looks like he shot it on this same balcony on his return from Walter Reed. The president clearly trying to use photo opportunities to pump up confidence about his health, even as the demand for answers to key questions about it intensifies. An impatient patient eager to return home finally does, taking off his mask and putting it in his pocket to pose for photos after landing at the White House tonight. President Trump was outside, not clear anyone was in his immediate vicinity, but some critics already saying this sends the wrong message. Now I'm better and maybe I'm immune. I don't know. Though he may not entirely be out of the woods yet, life. the team and I agree that all our evaluations and most importantly, his clinical status support the president's safe return home. His physician, Dr. Sean Conley, confident in the president's progress. He's back. Yeah. No more fever, no more cough, the president's doctors say. No fogginess from the coronavirus treatments he's getting. But also no answer on what his lung scans show with concerns the president might have pneumonia. And no response on when his last negative test was. A critical point for determining who else may have been exposed and at risk. I don't want to go backwards. The doctor uh, dodging some answers by citing patient privacy, even after revealing plenty of other personal information. Conley now dogged by credibility questions after acknowledging Sunday he didn't share the complete picture of the president's health. I was trying to reflect the the uh, the upbeat attitude that the team, the president, that his course of illness has had. The president calls the course of that illness an interesting so, uh, journey in a video he posted overnight. Journey. I learned a lot about COVID. I learned it by really going to school. This is the real school. And despite this pandemic stretching seven months, killing 211,000 Americans and infecting seven and a half million more, the president tweeting today, don't be afraid of COVID. Don't let it dominate your life. He's trying to show it's not dominating his, releasing pictures from inside Walter Reed and flouting CDC guidelines by cruising past supporters Sunday night. A decision his doctor defended today, saying the Secret Service agents with the president were in full protective gear. Other medical experts describe the drive-by as downright dangerous. The reality is, is that this was a dangerous move. There is no medical benefit for this to have taken place. At the White House, President Trump will have a home experience unlike any other American, with access to 24-7 care, that medical suite at the residence. And while he'll have to isolate himself, doctors are not ruling out he may head to the West Wing. That's where the Oval Office is. For the president, the next week will be critical. If we can get through to Monday with him remaining the same or improving, better yet, uh, then we will all take that final deep sigh of relief. And Hallie, how long will the president be isolating at home, do we know, and can he travel? Well, he wants to travel, Kate. The president's tweeting about being eager to get back on the campaign trail, but he has to be cleared before that happens. And as doctors say, in order to be able to leave isolation, he's got to show that he no longer is basically shedding that active virus, that he's no longer contagious. CDC guidelines say that takes roughly 10 days after the onset of symptoms. That's their recommendation. The president's doctors say it may be a little more or a little less than that, but we'll have to see. Kate? All right, Hallie Jackson at the White House. Thank you. Our senior medical correspondent, Dr. John, Ch John Torres, joins us now. Dr. John, I've talked to a lot of voters who support the president who will love that moment when he takes the mask off. But what is the public health message there? 
And Kate, from a public health perspective, it's disheartening because on one hand, we've been working for months to try and get the message across He's that met. masks are one of the tools to get this pandemic under control and to end it sooner rather than later. On the other hand, we have the President of the United States who is actively fighting coronavirus, who tested positive just a few days ago, who was on multiple medications for coronavirus to take off his mask and give his speech, I think sends the wrong message. We have an uphill battle to get everyone to wear masks, and this is certainly not helping it, Kate. And speaking of those multiple medications, the president in that new video says that he feels better than he's felt in a while, but he had access to things that others do not have access to, no? Yeah, he has access to intense medical care, best medical care in the world. And part of that means three different medications that not everybody does have access to. Of those medications, two of them, one remdesivir, is emergency use authorized, and so it's being used early in infections. The other one, dexamethasone, a steroid that's typically used later in the infections. But the third one, this is the monoclonal antibody cocktail that he was given, is in clinical trials, so it's experimental. So for him to get this at this point, only a handful of people have gotten that and this combination. So you're right, he is getting care that others necessarily are not getting. All right, Dr. John Torres, thanks so much. And tonight, many leading doctors say President Trump's treatment is raising questions in their minds as some of the drugs are meant for the sickest patients as well. Tom Costello has more. Tonight, even the president's own doctors concede they've taken a fast-track approach in treating the president involving some higher-risk medications. We're in a bit of uncharted territory when it comes to a patient that received the therapies he has so early in the course. At Walter Reed on Friday, the president was given the highest dose of an experimental antibody cocktail designed to kickstart the body's defenses. So far, there are only results on 275 trial patients. Mr. Trump received that antibody treatment under a compassionate use agreement with the company. I can assure you that um, there, there was, there's nothing to the notion that uh, any special relationships or anything like this. Uh, we've reached out certainly to the Biden team uh, to offer to offer um, our antibody cocktail to them. On Friday, Mr. Trump also received a first dose of remdesivir, an antiviral drug under emergency FDA approval to treat severe COVID cases. But most surprising, say outside experts, is that the president's doctors also administered dexamethasone, a steroid used to keep the patient's immune system from going into a dangerous overreaction. While it's been shown to cut the mortality rate of COVID by 20 percent, it's only meant for patients with severe COVID on oxygen or a ventilator. Why you would add uh, dexamethasone uh, to tamp things down uh, for someone who's not on oxygen, where there's a hint that using it early in the course uh, of COVID infection is not a good thing when you do want the immune system to respond. The president's doctor insists decisions about his care have been made with the president. He has never once pushed us to do anything that was beyond uh, safe and reasonable practice. Still, outside experts warn the president could still be in danger. In many cases, I've anecdotally seen that by, say, day six or seven after the onset of their symptoms, Things aren't looking so good anymore. So do I think he's out of the woods? No. Outside experts are also surprised that Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top infectious disease expert, has not been involved in the president's care. Kate? Tom Costello, thank you. There is growing concern about all those who came into contact with the president and each other, especially at a reception inside the White House last weekend for Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett. Was it a super spreader event? Here's Peter Alexander. Tonight, anger and frustration with the White House as the virus keeps spreading among the president's aides and allies. One White House official telling NBC News staffers feel left in the dark after finding out about confirmed cases by word of mouth or in the media, adding folks are dropping like flies over here. Also furious, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy. Clear that the president and his staff acted recklessly in coming to New Jersey in the first place, knowing that they had been exposed to someone with a confirmed positive test. Now slamming the president for attending a fundraiser at his Bedminster Golf Club after learning close confidant Hope Hicks had tested positive. The actions leading up to and during this event have put lives at risk. Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany, who addressed reporters without a mask just yesterday, was pulled from that trip at the last minute. 
She's now the ninth known person at that Rose Garden ceremony for Judge Amy Coney Barrett to contract the virus. A Southern California pastor who spent time last week with Vice President Mike Pence, today becoming the 10th. The event like a scene from a pre-pandemic universe, guests hugging and kissing. But even more stunning are the images at receptions inside. Again, no social distancing, no visible masks. The constellation of contacts is growing. Former advisor Kellyanne Conway and the president's debate advisor Chris Christie also infected. The White House has been relying heavily on testing to stop the spread, but it's far from foolproof. The rapid tests that the White House has been using have no data on their use in asymptomatic people. McEnany says she tested negative over the last several days before this morning's positive result. A negative test is a point in time and it may not be accurate. It does not mean you can ignore the other public health precautions. And tonight, the CDC again updating its guidance on how COVID is spread, acknowledging it can travel through the air beyond six feet under certain conditions and may linger in the air for minutes to hours especially in enclosed spaces with poor ventilation. And tonight, because the White House and the president's doctors have declined to say when President Trump last tested negative, it expands the possible window when he may have been infectious and traveling and raises questions whether the president was getting tested as often as he says. Kate. Peter Alexander, thank you. For his part, Joe Biden is in Florida for tonight's NBC News Town Hall, trying to build support in that key state, while the only vice presidential debate this Wednesday takes on new importance. Here's Garrett Hake. Tonight, Joe Biden pressing his advantage while the president is off the campaign trail. Thank you all so very much. Making two stops in Miami ahead of tonight's town hall. Now that he's busy tweeting campaign messages, I would ask him to do this. Listen to the scientists. Support mass. A new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll shows Biden opening a 14-point lead on President Trump nationally, with just 29 days to go until Election Day, and more than 3.8 million votes already cast. Long lines greeting voters on the first day of in-person early voting in South Carolina today, now one of 38 states where some form of early voting is underway. This week, the spotlight shifting to the battle for the vice presidency, with Senator Kamala Harris set to debate Vice President Mike Pence Wednesday in Utah. A seated standoff with tables spaced 12 feet apart and a plexiglass barrier between the candidates. Harris prepping in Salt Lake City with the help of former rival Pete Buttigieg, who stands in for fellow Hoosier Pence in some mock debate sessions. I look forward to the opportunity to take our case to the American people for four more years for President Donald Trump in the White House. What will the next presidential debate look like? Here's Biden today with a safety assist from Dr. Jill Biden. If the scientists say that, I'm, back. I'm sorry. If the scientists say that it's safe and the distances are safe, then I think that's fine. And tonight, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said the Senate will be full steam ahead on the Supreme Court confirmation of Judge Amy Coney Barrett, despite three Republican senators testing positive for the virus in the last week. Kate. Garrett Hake on Capitol Hill, thank you. And we'll hear much more from Joe Biden in that town hall Lester will be hosting in Miami tonight at 8 p.m. And in just 60 seconds, our conversations with voters in Battleground, Florida, what they told Lester about the president's illness, the impact of the pandemic, and the economic toll it's all taken. Back now with more on our NBC News Town Hall tonight with Joe Biden in Miami. With 29 days until the election, Lester spent the day talking to voters in that critical battleground state about how they're making their decision. Tonight in Battleground, Florida, polls show a tight race. And now voters are reacting to the president's personal battle with COVID. I mean, I feel bad for him, right? We met Pilar Guzman Zavala, a Biden supporter who recovered from coronavirus herself this summer. I don't want anybody to get sick or, or get worse. I mean, and he's the leader of our country today. When he had it, I got shocked. And he is 74 years old, so hopefully he you know, has a speedy recovery. Alejandro Puga supports President Trump. Like Pilar, he had COVID with just mild symptoms. How about some of the reaction you have heard? There's also some comments that I didn't like seeing that they were happy that he got it. He shouldn't wish that on the sitting president. Both are business owners in Florida. The Florida Department of Health says cases and deaths here are down sharply. 
and the governor just lifted virtually all COVID-19 restrictions. Pilar's Epanada business plunged during the shutdown. We're down to, ele you know, 11 stores are closed, three of them are open. That sounds devastating. It was very um, scary because in a week we had like one store after the other closing. Are you voting for Joe Biden or against Donald Trump? Both. So I am against Donald Trump. It doesn't represent what I believe this country is. But I also, I respect the fact that uh, Joe Biden was with an administration like Obama, which I respect a lot. Alejandro's freight business also took a hit. He's a former Democrat who believes President Trump is best to lead an economic comeback. For the past couple of months, I saw the president working hard, making sure that there's relief, money relief uh, for small businesses, especially Hispanic owned businesses. Across town, we met Andres Cabo, who had to lay off nearly all employees in his lighting store and was closed for months. This pandemic is the only thing that really put the fear of God in me. Tonight, he's for President Trump. I was a Trump guy, but I'm more of a Trump guy more than ever. Durable goods are up, uh, car sales are up, home sales, which affect us directly, are up. That gives me an indication that whatever he's doing, the country is coming back from this disaster that we've had as a pandemic. I support Joe Biden because he is a uniter. But Natalie Rivera will vote for Biden and criticizes the president's leadership. She was laid off during the shutdown while her husband was going through chemotherapy. We have a box full of medical debt. Medical debt. So with that very, very sudden stop, you know, it kind of makes you feel almost helpless and almost like saying, wow, I don't even know what, where to go from here. Then there's Heather Moling, who works for a popular fruit store chain, which laid off many of its employees, but has now hired most of them back. I'm hopeful for where we're headed. And tonight, she's a rare undecided voter. I've not been that pleased with the way the pandemic has been handled. As for Biden, I'm concerned with some of the radical views of the Democratic Party. She tells us she doubts she'll make up her mind before November 3rd. Lester Holt talking to voters there and up next, troubling new signs in the pandemic. As the president continues his COVID battle at the White House now, we're also seeing an alarming rise in cases across the country. Here's Miguel Almaguer. As our nation approaches 7.5 million confirmed COVID cases, tonight there are troubling signs in some two dozen states where new infections are quickly rising, while some of the country's least populous states are seeing the highest infection rates. Big cities like Denver are seeing their own surge in daily hospitalizations. For Lisa Terrio Heath, the numbers are personal. They died five days apart. Um, my mom and my dad. She lost her parents this spring as the virus infected her family. My sister was taking care of my mother. She caught it. Then she gave it to her son and her son gave it to his partner. And my brother gave it to his wife and my other brother caught it and gave it to his wife. Amid new single day records for new COVID cases, the nation's second largest movie chain is suspending operations as the governor of New York closes schools again in nine hotspot zip codes, including Brooklyn. You don't do this, the virus spreads, people die. The WHO says one in every 10 people around the globe has caught COVID. Here at one of the nation's largest testing sites, the numbers have stabilized, but officials warn of a second wave in California. With the CDC focused on families, the agency points to a 13-year-old girl who infected 11 relatives she was living with. But six others who visited, kept six feet apart and stayed outdoors, never got sick. But for Lisa's family, it's too late. This pain will never go away for me. Tonight, the cost of COVID still taking a devastating national toll. Miguel Almaguer, NBC News. Up next, the remarkable thing that happened after a school library was destroyed. Finally, the amazing response to a call for help after Hurricane Laura destroyed a school library. Rahema Ellis with Inspiring America. Take a book off the cart. 
At Carver Elementary, the library books are not in a room anymore. Now they're on wheels. We thank everybody across the whole United States for doing that for us. Thankful because in August, Hurricane Laura slammed into Louisiana's Beauregard Parish, ripping the roof off this little school, destroying the library. What went through you? Oh, I, I cried for days. We were not able to salvage even one book. Teacher Lily Richard and assistant principal P.J. Crow worried replacing the books would take time. We just wanted something immediate that our librarian could use as she went from classroom to classroom. Posting on Facebook led to an unexpected response. Nearly 3,000 books came from Massachusetts to Hawaii. Books are so important because they make you smart. What does it say to you about the kindness of people? The people of the nation spoke up and decided we're going to help you too and, and we're very grateful. Giving books to children is what great stories are made of. Rahima Ellis, NBC News. That is nightly news this evening. Please be sure to tune in tonight for Lester Holt moderating a town hall with Democratic presidential nominee Vice President Joe Biden in Miami at 8 p.m. I'm Kate Snow in for Lester. For all of us at NBC News, stay safe and have a great night.